Well, okay, I'm not talking about that kind of bass. I'm talking about this kind of bass. I'm bringing my basses to new heights. Uh, before we really get into talking about geometry and parallelograms, we need to talk about bass and height. But before I can teach you about bass and height, I need you to kind of make some observations of your own. Take a look at all of these different quadrilaterals, and you tell me what is the difference between A and B? And what is the difference between C and D? And if you look close at A and B, you're going to notice a lot of the things are the same. But there's one thing that's different. When you look at C and D, same thing. There's a lot of things the same, but there's one thing that's different between C and D. But now I want you to look at all of the different bases. A's base, B's base, C's base, D's base. Out of these, which one does not belong? And that's what I need you to write down for me. So pause the video and write down your thoughts on which one does not belong. And now we're going to do a second activity. Thinking, again, looking at shapes and just making some observations. I'm going to give you this quadrilateral at first. And then I'm going to give you this quadrilateral. Now you tell me what is the same about both shapes and what is different about both shapes. And I'm sure you can make some observations. And I'm going to go to set ahead and say, I will give you one point for everything that you notice. So if you list 15 things, I'm going to give you 15 points, but they got to be legit things. You know, you can't say they're outlined in black. Well, I mean, okay, sweetie, but that's, that's kind of obvious. I'm looking for some mathematical stuff. I want some mathematical words. So if you give me mathematical vocabulary and mathematical thoughts on how these are the same and different, I'll give you a point for each one. So pause the video and write down what you notice. Now that, we got some now that we got some observations out of the way, let me tell you our objectives for today. By the end of this lesson, you are going to know what a base is, a height is, a parallelogram, and you're going to start being able to explore the formula ABH. The area is equal to the base times the height in a parallelogram. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to calculate area without counting the boxes, but by multiplying. So let's get ready. Look at the shape. What is the area of this parallelogram? If you know the most basic way to do it, then it's, you're just going to count the boxes that you see. You're going to count the square units that you see one by one. Now, I don't like counting one by one. It takes me too long, so I'm just going to count by sixes. So this whole area here is 30. There's 30 square units here. So now I need to do something with these triangles. Like, How am I going to count these triangles? Usually what people do then, the second step, when they realize they can't count the boxes, is they decompose the shape into something that's easier to count, like this kid. The first step they did was they cut off that extra triangle, and then they moved that extra triangle to the other side. And when they did that, you could see that it made a perfect rectangle. And when it made a perfect rectangle, I could just do 7 times 6 is 42. The area is 42. So when I had... So when I head back to this actual shape, I can say the area is 42. But when I look at this, I'm like, where, where's the base? Where's the height? I don't understand. Let me explain that to you. One base measurement is any place where the shape can lay on the bottom, right? So I can't do it on a vertice, it'd fall over, right? I can't do it on a corner. But if I laid on the bottom here, well, there's the base right there. But in fact, I'm an intelligent person. I could turn it upside down. So this side right here is also a base. Those are easy to count bases. Now the other sides are also flat, so I could also lay it on a base. But in this example, the graph is not going to make it easier to count. I'd have to pick up the piece and turn it. So yes, it could be a base um, if the graph lined up nicer for me. And height. Where is one height measurement? The definition of height is that it is perpendicular to the base. It's got to be absolutely perpendicular to the base. And that means a perfect 90 degree angle. So this could be the height and this could be the height 
or this one, or this one, or this one. In fact, this one could also be the height too because it goes all the way from the tippy tippy top to where the bottom line is. It doesn't have to be on the inside of it. But this one is not. It doesn't go to the top and the bottom. Now, if we're gonna decompose the shape, not talking about base and height, if we're gonna decompose the shape, I could cut it here and move the other piece over, but that's kind of not the best place because I end up with that weird spot that's not exactly a triangle. I could cut it here, and then I end up with a triangle that I could move easier, sure. Or I could cut it here, and I end up with an easy to move triangle again. If I put it here, what am I decomposing? I'm, I'm not, if I cut on that red line, there's nothing to cut there. So that's a height, but not a good place to decompose it at. In fact, if I wanted to, I could decompose it anywhere. Like right there. But you actually don't have to decompose it. There is another way to calculate area. So we could count the boxes. We could decompose it into easier to count shapes, or we could use the formula. Area equals base times height, ABH. In which case I count the length of a base, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I count the height, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven times six is 42. The area of this parallelogram is 42. So let's talk a second about bases and heights because they have to be labeled correctly. And a lot of times it's hard because there's like all the sides are labeled and you gotta figure out which one is the base. So let's just look at all of these and you tell me which ones have the base and the height correctly labeled. Let's look at this one a little closer because only one of these is correct. Which one of these has the base and the height perpendicular to each other and labeled correctly? Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Only that one. Ta-da! Now watch very carefully how I can take any parallelogram and manipulate the side of the base and change it to longer or shorter and watch what happens to the height. In fact, I could change any side that I wanted to and watch what happens to the height. So in this quick little applet right here, just make some observations on what is happening between the base and the height and where they are located. So let's go, go over some true or false things to make sure you understand. And all you have to do is just say whether the sentence is true or false, but be very careful of all those tricky words I'm going to try to throw in and mess with you. Is that true or false? What do you think? If you said false, you are correct. Because any side could, could be a base because I could turn the shape. Yep, that one's definitely true. Okay, you're on your own with the other ones. You tell me what you think. Is it true or is it false and why? Okay, so now let's look again. Which one of these parallelograms have the correct base and height labeled? All right, so let's review real quick. If you want to calculate the area, instead of counting the area, 
try multiplying the base and the height to get the area. Now you actually have three methods to do it. You could count the boxes, you could decompose the polygon, or you could multiply the base and the height in a parallelogram. You have this worksheet in front of you. It should take you less than 10 minutes to do it. So take this one out and I want you to calculate the base, the height, and the area. So in today's lesson, I hope you have learned the definition of a base and how it relates to a height and that these only work on parallelograms and that the formula is area equals base times height. And I hope you can calculate in any parallelogram now by not counting one by one. I mean, it's kind of hard, you lose track, but instead by multiplying. And there you go, there you have it. Bases and heights by the notorious Miss Brenner, who does not have a bass guitar.